That's right, folks. We're selling torches and pitchforks right here. Buy them in a set, and you'll get 30% off right now. Oh, hello, my friends. So, last week, Clear Force Doki Doki premiered on Netflix, and it's caused a little bit of an uproar in the fandom. Oh, not with the uh, hardcore Precure fans, though there are sex like that. But really, more so with a certain group who are protesting based on discrimination. The fairies. Yup, just as I predicted, they skipped a grand total of 13 episodes, and of them, there were a few that starred the fairies, who won't be getting any royalty checks as a result. So I thought I'd just capitalize a little by supporting their regime. Oh, yes sir, uh, here's your change. Still, fairy civil rights aside, how did Glare Force's second outing fare overall? Did all these omitted episodes completely gut the series, or did the English dub make up for all of its shortcomings? <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, jeez, I couldn't even finish that sentence. Let's just look at the fallout this show left in its wake. Okay, so before we get to the main topic at hand, let's quickly go over the new characters and their voice actors. Much like the other antagonists, Riva and Gura managed to maintain their original names, and while I can't really pin down who Gura is, I can easily tell Riva is Todd Habercorn. The two of them do an adequate job. I think Todd does a good job capturing Riva and some of his more homosexual tones, and Gura just sounds like a big idiot, so really no fault there. But the one everyone kept asking me about was what I thought about the casting choice of Erica Lindbeck for the Six Ranger. And overall, yeah, I think she did a good job playing the ace Augury, or in this case, Natalie. As most of us know, Natalie's transformation involves her aging up into Ace, meaning that the actress needs to play both a little girl character and a young adult woman. And yeah, Erica has more than enough range to pull it off, unlike some of her cohorts who will go unnamed. Granted, I don't think it was her best performance. That art goes more to her playing the living representation of this beauty right here. Though, when you really think about it, Uzume's transformation is kind of the polar opposite, isn't it? Oh, I finally won against Doggy! Doggy? Hmm. Interesting how that works out. But yeah, anytime you can remind me of my precious orange heart, then you have my vote. So again, no real complaints as far as actors are concerned, even though I am kind of getting tired of hearing Cabricorn all the damn time. Still, good performances or not, we can't simply overlook at what this adaptation left on the kind room floor. To this show's credit, at least they made my job a little bit easier by not pulling any more of that half episode nonsense from season 1, and just took out whole episodes. So let's see, from the perspective of its source material, they skipped Episodes 28 and 29, episodes 32 through 38, 40 and 41, and episode 44. Okay, maybe my job's not that much easier. But hey, at least they kept in the Diamond and Ira episode, so... Yay. Alright, starting from the top, episode 28 was admittedly a little bit more of a fillerish episode with the girls going to a Japanese summer festival and Augury becoming friends with her classmate. I say Augury because I'm pretty sure Natalie never interacts with this girl even though she does appear briefly in another episode. This is another case where the episode may have been a little bit too Japanese and the massive amount of signs they would have to edit would be a pain, so I understand. And if this had been one of the few episodes they admit, I don't think it would have been that much of a big loss. Too bad it's not one of the few, and certainly not the last potential Natalie episode they skipped over. 29 was one of the episodes that put me in my current situation, with it featuring the fairies transforming into humans for the first time. Speaking for my customers for a minute, omitting this episode was a bad call I think, as not only was it an entertaining episode, but it also gave them much needed characterization. Without it, the fairy partners just come off as your standard annoying sidekicks rather than three-dimensional characters who earnestly wanted their partners to succeed. Oh, but we're just getting started. Ooh, that's a lot of episodes. In fact, enough for a little story arc. You know, I don't want to have to cover all these episodes. If that were the case, I may as well just do my Doki Doki Prank here right now, so I'll just summarize them. So, at the end of episode 31 of Precure, or 23 of Glitter Force, Bell essentially kills both Riva and Gura by extracting their powers after their latest loss. It's an 
awesome scene in either version that makes it look like the dude is finally going to step up his game. In Precure, he does this by creating the blood rings out of the extracted energy from Riva and Gura to power up both him and his allies. In Glitter Force, though... Nope. They just skipped to episode 39 after the rings were destroyed in 38, and the villains were beat up after their latest defeat. I mean, just imagine the reaction from anyone unfamiliar with the source material going from this to this. It just don't add up! Any child would be able to tell they dropped a huge plot point, and don't think this is the last one, we'll get to that in just a bit. The Skip Precure episodes themselves featured a follow-up to the Happy Prince story, which, again, I think somebody at Saban just hates that story for some reason, and character development for both Augury and, again, the fairies. Which, speaking of which, I think my customers are getting a little impatient. Be right back. Yes, thank you for your business. Take down the man and all that, I guess. So, continuing... While you can argue some of these episodes are more fillerish than others, it is very jarring to just drop that stinger from the previous episode. At bare minimum, they should have at least adapted episodes 32 and 38. But I guess that wouldn't have fit into their very tight 15 episode per season thing or whatever. And again, they also contained a significant amount of character development for the fairies and Augury. Augury was already a hard enough sell for the fans of the original who wanted Regina to become Ace. So for Natalie, who lacks about 40% of that development, she ends up mostly coming off as what many initially viewed Augury as, a smartass little brat who stole the spotlight from much more deserving characters. She doesn't quite reach... Justin levels, but isn't all that endearing, even with the Yuzume voice. Oh, and also, why would you ever remove Petal Carrot Mana? Stop. How many times? Yeah! That is just one of the greatest things ever. Moving on, I'll hold off on episode 40 for now, I want to save talking about that for last, so let's just get right into 41, 42, and 44. 41 is filler, I'll admit, but also does serve to give closure to a side character who did appear in Glitter Force, so it is a shame it was skipped. 42, yet again, was an Augury episode that also acted as build-up towards the big reveal of the season. It wasn't 100% necessary, but again, Natalie is getting the shaft on character development. 44 was a Christmas episode that featured the return of Joe, so of course in Glitter Force, he just returns out of nowhere. Cause really, who cares about continuity at this point? Oh, and also there was a kind of nice scene between Regina and King Selfish that really highlighted how torch she is between the two opposing forces. Powerful scenes like this are missed, but again, they're not totally necessary. The last on the docket, however, had a very powerful scene and was very plot significant, and was the breaking point for me in this series. <sighs> so, episode 40. You know, not only is this a very plot important episode for the series, it's also one of my all time favorite Precure episodes ever. And yet, deep down, I knew they were going to skip this one, mostly because of its main attraction, and I get it, budget and all that, but you know, ultimately, this just highlights why a Precure adaptation cannot work under such constrained conditions. So, for those unfamiliar, the main plot of this episode features Makoto trying to use her music to help win Regina back from the clutches of her father. She works tirelessly to complete the song not only because it was her duty as a Precure, but also because she had become a genuine friend to Regina and wanted to rescue her from her father's manipulative ways. And when she finally does sing it for her, it's an amazing scene. I'll do a more proper analysis of this scene at another time, but in short, it perfectly highlights everything great about Precure. If I ever wanted to introduce my friends to this franchise, this would be one of the first episodes I would show them. So, while I can understand them not adapting this episode likely because of that whole song sequence, not that that stopped Wendy Lee and Haruhi, but different shows, different budgets, I guess. I see little merit in watching this show over the original if that's the case. Cause guess what, on top of missing out on this spectacular scene, they also lost out on the debut of the final power-up of the series. Yeah, and Precure made sense that they earned this power thanks to Makoto's efforts, so then what did they do in Glitter Force to explain the sudden appearance of this harp thing, and you finish her after they had only used the Royal Flush finisher a grand total of two times? Nothing. 
This show doesn't have plot holes, it has plot canyons. My opinions on the other aspects of this adaptation also are made largely the same from my previous video. The dialogue is still overly cheesy and kills off a lot of the tension at times. The music doesn't match, and while the darkening of scenes is not quite as bad as it was before, it's still there. Actually, going back to dialogue for a minute, while they do sometimes bring it up, the theme of characters balancing selfishness and selflessness is largely dropped again as I predicted. And in its place, they just talk about light and darkness all the damn time. Cause yeah, constantly talking about the conflict between good and evil with such vague, cliched terms always makes for good writing. You're lucky I enjoy your gameplay. But really, at this point, stuff like that is just a drop in the hat for why I think this series just doesn't work as an adaptation in my opinion. I mean, putting aside my thoughts on characterization and the like for a minute, this story is very clearly missing huge chunks. Adaptation or not, you still need to tell a complete story regardless. You can't just have villains lose their powers while the heroes suddenly gain new powers. You know, that's the equivalent of that stupid tiki head saying. There's a simple explanation for that. Then again, considering this was the second half of the show, they may as well just have called it Glare Megaforce for all I care. Oh wait, they need to include Super Natal too, don't they? You know what, I actually came up with a great title if that's the case. You could call it Glitter, Supercalifragic, Mega Force, Doki Doki. Now that's a title actually, you're welcome Saban. This show's problems are only further exacerbated due to the lack of characterization. Natalie's character development feels incredibly rushed and inorganic without some of the less story driven episodes that flesh out her character. Meanwhile, the fairies... get none. All in all, while Glitter Force Doki Doki is far from the worst thing to ever happen to the Precure franchise, it is an unsurprisingly shoddy adaptation from a company that's well past its prime at this point. Now, all that said, if you enjoyed this series as well as the previous one, then more power to you. I know this series has its followers who even argue it's better than the original. I would wholeheartedly disagree with them, but I also won't say they're necessarily wrong. I actually have a follower on Twitter who is really enthusiastic about this show, at least a lot more than me, and he even makes pretty good AMVs about it. You can go check out his channel, I left a link in the description. He's Kylo Ren on Twitter, and Ben Solo on YouTube. Get same character and all that? <laughs> And yeah, I guess I should be at least grateful that Precure is being introduced to a much more international audience in some form. Not the best form in my opinion, but at least it's something. And if it can encourage others to track down the original or even check out stuff like Fresh and Hard Catch, then at least they accomplished something, so take my words with a grain of salt. Personally, I'm never gonna watch this again. I've got a lot of better things to watch on Netflix anyways. And... You know what, I know I said I was going to do Sweet Precure next, but I gotta do something to clean my palate. So, next time, top Precure insert songs. And until then though, farewell for now my friends, and... Happy humming!